Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun here, and I'm going to do a quick video for you about some of the gear that I keep in my hiking pack. Say, well, why don't you just go out to the field and do it? Well, because the field where I live is Wyoming and the wind is almost always blowing in Wyoming. And even when it seems still, it's still pretty loud for recording video. So what I did is I went out or into the field and I'm going to show you some of the stuff in the field, the fire starting and so forth. But we're gonna talk about the gear in here. All right, first of all, what do I have? I have an Alps pack, a really nice pack. It's, it's soft, so it's not that hard, noisy, nylon, relatively lightweight. It's a good pack, a good all-around hiking backpack, day pack. What have I got inside here? First thing I want to talk about is a couple of tools that I feel are often overlooked. Uh, very handy tools. This is a Glock knife. Yes, for those of you that don't know, Glock has been making field knives for a long, long time and they're fantastic. I've had this knife for probably going on 20 years. It still sharpens up, no problem. Has a polymer sheath, nothing fancy about this, but it's a good sized field knife. It is not that heavy, it has a polymer handle, has a polymer sheath, has a carbon steel blade. Good knife from Glock. Same guys that make your guns, right? What else do we have? Well, in this pouch, I have a Glock E-Tool, a Glock entrenching tool. And like Glock does, they make the uh, a lot of polymer. The handle is polymer. You unscrew it, pull it out, and then you tighten it up, and there you go. You've got an E-Tool, very lightweight, probably one of the lightest E-Tools on the line uh, or on the market. They've got a secret, there's a little secret. If you take this end cap off, what's in there? A saw, look at that. So what you can do is you drop this back on here, put that back, I'm gonna get dirty here with my E-tool. Put this back on here, screw it down, and now you have a, an emergency or a utility field saw and then the end is flat, so you could use that as a big screwdriver if you needed to. So this is the Glock E-Tool. Yes, these are still available. And the Glock Field Tools are probably the most underrated products that Glock offers. But they do offer them, and uh, they're really handy. And like I said, for backpacking, both of them are relatively lightweight. So you've got your E-Tool, you've got your, uh, your field knife there and comes in a very, very super lightweight uh, nylon pouch. Something that I did for myself years and years ago when I packed this away is I took this Baylor's twine and I shoved a whole crap load, this is probably 50 feet or more of Baylor's twine into my pouch. And you say, why would you do that for, for backpacking or outdoors or survival or whatever? because in addition to using the Baylor's twine as twine to just tie things down, what you can also do is you can cut off sections of this Baylor twine, untwist it, and it makes excellent uh, tinder for fire starting. You can make it into what we call a bird's nest and catch sparks from your sparking tool, and it's fantastic for starting fires. Uh, so in addition to just using it as twine, and it's relatively lightweight and it costs almost nothing. Uh, if you're in farm country, you can grab, you know, 50 feet of Baylor's twine and it costs you 50 cents or something. So uh, two really handy and often overlooked tools, the Glock entrenching tool and the Glock field knife, and then kind of a little lanyard for you guys. You can take that Baylor's twine and use it as fire starting tinder, make a little bird's nest, Flick your sparks into there, bam, you got it. All right, what else do I have in here? Oh, let's see. 
I have a ready man poncho liner. Yes, indeed, I've got a ready man poncho liner. Even if you are, even if it's summertime, like where I live right now, for instance, I live in the high elevations and it'll get in the summertime, uh, mid to upper 80s, maybe lower 90s in the middle of the day. And you're like, wow, that's so warm. But because it's a dry climate, as soon as that sun goes down, boom, you lose 20, sometimes 30 degrees of temperature and you need something to keep you warm. A poncho liner such as this one is the Fashizzle. It's relatively lightweight. Obviously, it's very compact, but uh, your kit should have a poncho liner of some type in it. All right. What else have we got in here? Let's talk about fire starting. Whether it's just for comfort, whether it's for cooking food, uh, maybe you might have got lost and you need to signal. If it's an emergency, it's a survival situation you're going to want to have a fire, right? And there's lots of different ways that you can start fires. There's lots of different ways you can keep fires going. One of the very simple ways uh, is your typical, your ferrocium rod or your sparkers. There's a lot of these emergency sparkers out there right now. Uh, what I have here is a combination tinder scraper, and ferrocium or fire sparking rod. What you do is you actually take sticks or twigs or whatever, and you make yourself a bunch of tinder. And what I do, or what I did, is I, I made the little bird's nest out of the baler's twine, made a bunch of the tinder, dumped it in there, flicked sparks on it, and poof, there you go. This is kind of like the caveman old way of starting a fire, but it works. And the great thing about these fire sparkers or ferrocene rods or whatever, is you can get completely wet. You could fall off a boat into the ocean or a lake or whatever, or fall into a river and be, and be soaked and just dry these off and they're gonna work. Unlike matches or lighters, if they go underneath the water, most of them will be ruined, right? So there you go, that's number one. You say, well, what about some other stuff? I went to the Ready Man catalog, and I got these stormproof sweet fire matches. The best, basically, they're like gigantic matches that already have tinder attached to them, uh, and they they look like this. You can look closely. Uh, I've got obviously video of them working in the field. Uh, they are they spark anywhere. They're windproof, waterproof. You strike them. Put them down, put your tinder on them, start your fire, all right? Obviously, we want to have a fire. What are some of the other things that I have in my pack here? Got some other cool stuff in my pack. Where, aha, here we go. Uh, this is another thing. I went to the uh, Ready Man website, and I bought this. The, this is a waterproof container full of your the infamous lifeboat matches, right? These big, giant fat matches that are windproof, waterproof, and there's a striker on the outside of the uh, actual carrier. So get your tinder all ready, get all your stuff ready, and then strike your match, and boom, you got it going right there. So right there, I've got the sparker, I've got the sweet fire little match tinder combos, and then I got the light bulb matches. All of those things uh, make good fires. So not really super over in depth, but if you're going to go backpacking, you should have a first aid kit obviously in there. You should have some type of tools. Like I said, the Glock tools are often overlooked. They're really handy. Um, are you gonna be able to dig a ditch with a Glock E-Tool? Probably not, but you're not gonna wanna carry a big heavy shovel on your back when you're going backpacking, right? And I tell you what, whether it's snow or sand or dirt or whatever, you're better off having a very lightweight shovel or e-tool like that Glock one than trying to dig with your hands. I shouldn't have to tell you that you should always have a sharp knife on you. Um, that goes without saying. This backpack, like I said, this is an Alps Outdoors backpack, relatively lightweight, uh, lots and lots of compartments here. Uh, front, back, side, got lots and lots of room for, oh, one other thing. Oh, that's right, I almost forgot. If you're going to be out, I highly recommend, if you're going to be out in the woods, uh, wherever it is, by the water, in, in the green woods, in the mountains, in the swamps, a, a thermosil. 
when the sun goes down, the bugs come out. Sometimes the bugs are out even before the sun goes down. And you're going to be miserable if there's mosquitoes around you all the time. I've been using the Thermacell product uh, for probably, I don't know, 10 years or so. Ever since they came out, it, they work fantastically well. I've used them in the south. I've used them in the west. I've used them by, you know, lakes, marshes, in the woods, whatever. They work really well. They're relatively lightweight. And let me tell you what, brothers and sisters, if you're out camping or hiking or backpacking and you have to stay overnight, and you sit there around the fire and there's constantly mosquitoes by your face, you're gonna be miserable. This thing is, it weighs a few ounces and it is worth the weight and the space that it takes in your pack. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. That's just a few things that I carry in my backpack. Uh, maybe you wanna pack up some of those things, maybe you don't, but you've got the information now. Take it and do what you will with it. I'm your host, Paul Markle. Talk to you again real soon.